one moment because now we are live streaming. There you go. Boom. You can click that. Got it. If you're on Zoom and if you're on YouTube, welcome YouTube. We're so happy that you could be here with us joining us. This is a Monday workout for those of us who are on Zoom. We're doing our first workout of the week. And remember, a lot of us here, we're on that TrueFit Adaptive Fitness app. And so if there's a workout, the workout from today, or any workouts that you want to get in there and log, go ahead and do that. Also, you can now get on the app on your computer. Did you know that? Probably you didn't know because it's just happened. So if you go to app.gettruefit.com, so Ben, Nick, you guys check that out, Carrie. Go app, app.gettruefit.com. Dot com And now you have your app on your computer. You can build workouts. You can check out the library. You can watch Nick's exercises, learn from Coach Emily, uh, maybe learn some stuff that's going to make you a team leader. That's what we want to see. I heard that we had a breathing motto uh, athlete who was ready to go. And let's go ahead and check in with Carrie and find out who that's going to be. It is going to be Lorraine. All right, Lorraine, last time she did the breathing motto, it was amazing. Everybody, let's get ready. Here she is again. Lorraine, go ahead and get us started off. Oh, okay. Breathe in the good. Breathe out the bad. Breathe in your best breathe out the worst oh breathe in the happy breathe out the sad breathe in your power So you reach your goals first. Nice job, Lorraine. That was excellent. She did a great job. And I think Lorraine realized, she said, wait a second, I got to make sure we get the happy and the sad. And she was able to bring it all back together. Lorraine, that was a terrific breathing motto. Thank you for getting us started off. I hope you're ready for a great workout for Monday. I got something new we're going to do. We might have done this before, but we're going to kind of do uh, certain exercises today. We're going to do them four different ways. We're going to do balance. We're going to do accuracy or stability. We're going to do strength. And then we're going to do what was going on? The other one was speed. So we're going to do uh, working out with different equipment. So we might have a weight and we're going to balance the weight. We're going to be accurate with the weight. We're going to work on strength with the weight. And then we're even going to maybe work on some speed with the weight and see how that affects our body. But first, let's get started by checking out the picture behind me. If you can't see the background right here, we have, again, this is coming in from our co-host and team leader, Carrie. She created this, and this is, Carrie, remind us, what's the name of the type of artwork? Diamond painting. Diamond painting, and this looks like uh, uh, up in Wisconsin, there's a bunch of cows. They're all walking around in the pastures. This looks like one of those happy cows walking around in Wisconsin and probably hanging out there saying, you know, we're making, we're making cheese. This is a great job, Carrie. How long did this take you to do? Two months. Two months. Everybody, can you imagine working on something for two months, how rewarding that's going to feel when you Get it com- completed. How did it feel when you were all finished up? I was so excited. Isn't it awesome when you can kind of look at your accomplishment? And in this case, for Carrie, she can actually not just see it, but you can feel it. This has a texture to it. I think it's so cool. Carrie, again, she's an artist. She's been sending these in. Uh, we've seen what well, we had the butterfly. What else did we have? We had um, dogs. The dogs. What do you have coming next? Do you have one in mind for next up? Yeah, I'm doing a Winnie the Pooh one. Right a Winnie now. the Pooh one. Oh, my gosh. I cannot wait to see this. Maybe he's going to be getting his hand in some honey or something like that, right? That's what that bear was always into. Let's go ahead, and we're going to look around this diamond painting by moving our neck around. So over here, you can see we kind of have the color list. There's the cow up there. We can't see the flowers on the cow's head, but they're up there. 
And uh, everybody, let's go ahead and go side to side as if we're looking over here, and then we're gonna be looking over this way at the cow. So let's go ahead and turn our head over to this side right here. It's gonna kind of light my face up this way. And then we're gonna bring ourselves over to the other side, just going left to right, going back over to the first direction. For me, that's the left. If you started off to the right, that's okay. Now remember our posture. Let's go ahead and make sure we're in our best possible posture. It's gonna require a little bit of effort. I would say 10% effort you're gonna to have to put into your core. Let's hold it over here. Let's go one more time looking over here towards the cow. Go in three, two, and one. All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna go down and up. And so we're gonna bring our chin, we're gonna tuck it down like we're looking down at the ground or down at the cow's feet. And then we're gonna bring our chin up high, bring it up high, like we're looking up at the, the flower crown that is on this cow. And then let's go ahead and look back down again, down at the ground, holding it there, three, two, one, bringing it back up, holding it up for three, two, one. Let's go one more time down. Everybody's doing great. This is our very first exercise, is just our neck. Three, two, one, and relax. Let's bring our head right back into the middle. All right, now the next thing, I have something funny out. All right, so we're gonna spell out a um, some letters, because it's just fun to do, and the, the two letters we're gonna spell, we're gonna do one of them twice. Let's see if you can guess what we're gonna get here. So the first letter, I'm not gonna tell you what it is. I'm just gonna talk about how you make it. So we're gonna start with our head down towards our shoulder, like we're looking down at the ground. With our head staying over here on this side, let's go all the way up. All right, now let's come down halfway into the middle, right here at the screen. Now let's go back up to the other side and then bringing our head back down. All right, what letter was that? Now let's go ahead and make two of the next letter and it's the opposite. That one was straight lines. This one is gonna be just a complete circle. So let's go ahead and go around, bring our head down, bringing it over this way, going up. And now you don't have to lift your head all the way back when you go up. Just kind of imagine you're looking up at some clouds and let's keep going around and let's go on around. So remember, what was the first letter? I saw Carrie, she got it. What was the first letter? Let's keep going around and around. And what is this second letter? And we just keep on making it. So what's that spell? What do we got? Carrie, what's that spell? We got the first letter. Moo. Moo, that's right. And the more we keep going around and around, the more the cow goes moo. This is a lot of O's and let's rest. Let's go back in the middle. So remember everybody, when we're moving our head around, when we're moving our head in straight lines, um, we're exercising our neck, but we're also exercising our mind and we're getting our mind connected with these muscles. And that is just what is so important, especially as we're getting into our warm up and getting our head going. Let's go ahead and think about some other types of animals that maybe use their neck a lot. Um, how about an owl? All right, what is, what is an owl known for? We're kind of turning its neck around. How far can you turn your head to the side? Now, don't do this to where it hurts you. Just go to where it kind of feels good. And remember how Coach Emily kind of has mentioned, maybe take a deep breath. Exhale. Then maybe turn a little bit more like an owl, like you're trying to see behind you. Let's bring it around nice and slow to the other side, like an owl. Now, we can't do what an owl can do, right? Let's take a great breath in. Breathe out and turn a little more. Looking behind ourselves, nice. All right. What about a, um, what's an ostrich do, right? What, what, who knows what ostrich does? That'll be our question. Let's go on to the next one. Let's do giraffe and turtle because we know about those. What's an ostrich do? Is there something we can do? All right, giraffe neck. Let's go ahead and let's bring our neck out away from our body where our head's going to move forward. So here we go, I'm going forward. Giraffe neck. And now we're going to go turtle neck. We're going to bring it back. And we're going to bring our chin back. We're going to hold it up there. Three, two, one. Let's go back out. Giraffe neck. Out with the giraffe neck. Bringing it back. Turtle neck. Three, two, one. Let's go out again one more time. Giraffe neck. Reach that neck out to the side. Bringing it back. Turtle neck. Three, two, one. All right. What's another creature 
Um, I'm trying to think of something, maybe like a bat or who's ever seen like a little prairie dog, right? Sometimes they hear a sound, they pop up out of their head and what they might do the ear lift, right? They might be lifting their ear up, trying to get a better sound. So let's bring one ear up and then one shoulder down. And you can see, there we go. I got my ear going up. I'm stretching the side of my neck. I got it going up. My shoulder's going down. Three, two, one, back into the middle. Maybe let's move our shoulders around for some free movement. Think about your trapezius. This is the first time we've now moved down from our neck, right? We started to get those trapezius going. Let's do the other ear. Let's get that ear up like we're a little prairie dog. Out on the prairie, we just heard a little sound. We got to get that ear up. We got to poke our head up. Maybe looking around, three, two, one, and relax. What's an ostrich do? Puts its head in the sand, right? How do we do that? Maybe tuck and roll, tuck and roll, put our head down, and then look up like we're an ostrich looking around. So I want you to go real tall. Look, at you can see, this is me sitting normally, and I watch this. When I go ostrich, I'm looking up. I'm looking real tall. Everything is going up. Even my eyebrows are going up because I'm just thinking, Get tall like an ostrich. Let's put our head in the sand. Let's go ahead and tuck our head down. Maybe curl our abs forward. And then let's go up, up tall in the core, up tall in your neck like you're an ostrich looking around like your head was in the sand. Let's go bring it back down. Put your head in the sand. I'm putting my head on my desk. Now I'm bringing it up again, bringing it up, looking around. Let's hold it up. Three, two, looking around and one. Woo. You might have felt like you were getting taller there. And you can do that. Remember, your muscles in here. A lot of times because of gravity and a lot of times we're sitting down a lot. And so the gravity is kind of compressing our body. It's like it's trying to smush us. We're always dealing with gravity. And so when we do exercises, that's going to help our body to regain the length and regain the spacing in the joints, in the spine, in the ribs, um, there's a lot of areas in our body that can be compressed and feel tightened up. And so an exercise where we're getting real tall, like an ostrich, that could be a really good exercise. Let's drink some water. That could be maybe the best exercise. Wow, look at that. It, it, it hit my face for a second. I like with this green screen. Again, Karen, one of the best ideas we've ever had in the history of ideas on this workout. And now we get to look at Carrie's art this is incredible. If you are an artist out there, even if you're on YouTube, if you're on YouTube and you're watching this and you want to see one of your pictures on the background, we'll do a full workout with your art up here behind us. You can send that into us and we'll put it up here. Carrie got this into me and I love sharing this. We've had art from Sandy. We've had art. I think we've had some other art up on here too. So if you're an artist and you'd like to share some art, um, you can do that. This is a great platform to do that on. Uh, Nick, how many, now Carrie knows, but Nick, because Nick is back, everybody. Nick, how many diamonds do you think this is? Who, who knows? Who can guess out there? How many diamonds? I don't know. And remember, when you do the I don't know, you're getting that trapezius lift. So let's go ahead. Let's do trapezius lift. Hold it up. Then we're going to bring it down. And then we're going to armpit squeeze. This is our three moves to get our top of our shoulder and the bottom of our shoulder. So here we go, three, two, one, let's go. I don't know how many this is, let's hold it for three, two, one. Let's now push it down, but we're not squeezing. Three, two, one, now let's squeeze. It's different than pushing down. They're not gonna be as far down. Three, two, one, now let's go back up with like, I don't know, and relax your armpit. Let those muscles relax. Let your trapezius hold the arms up. All right, now we're going down bringing it down. And you can see my arms are in, they're not squeezing. I'm kind of pushing down. I can feel this in my neck on both sides. All right. Now we're going to squeeze, squeeze. I'm not feeling it in my neck anymore because now it's in my armpit. Let's go one more time. Here we go. Bringing it up, holding it up. Let's go with a five second hold. Four, three, two, one. I don't know how many this is. Carrie, go ahead and let us know when you're ready. Let's go ahead and bring them down. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to guess 2,500, oh, 500, wow. 500 diamonds putting down on that paper. You got to put every single one down. Carrie, that is incredible, 500. Let's go ahead, I'm back up to the shoulder shrug. Now I do know, I'm just doing this now for my trapezius. Let's hold it up, trapezius lift, squeeze that trapezius, get up there by the ears. 
bringing the shoulders down, holding them down. Here we go. Three, two, one. Give them a squeeze for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And relax. Let's do a little free movement. Let's do a little free movement. Maybe like a little shoulder dancing. Who can maybe do like shoulder dancing to where we're kind of, like you see my arms moving, but look, I'm, I'm, I'm not really using my arms. I'm using my trapezius. So let's do a little, little shoulder shrugs. And it, I mean, it literally looks like we're dancing in our chairs. But all I'm doing is some shoulder movements, moving my shoulders around. I'm also kind of moving my body side to side. All right. And now let's go from free movement into an elbow lift. Should we go side, back, front? Ooh, let's go front and side. Here we go. So now let's go ahead and we're going to bring our elbows up. Let's go one elbow up, one elbow out. And we're just going to hold it here. All right. We just changed it all up. And that's what we can do. Remember with exercise. Some exercise is going to have you moving around. Some exercise, it's going to have you holding steady. All right, now just because your arms are up right now, you're exercising. You're working against gravity and you're using the weight of your arm to strengthen your shoulder. Same thing on this side in a different position. Let's go ahead and switch them up. So now this one's going to go up. This one's going to go out. And so I got this elbows out here. It looks like I'm getting the cow just scratching her neck with my elbow. And then I got this elbow right in front right here. And you can tell, look, there's my elbow. And over here is my elbow over here. All right, let's go ahead, one in front. Now we're gonna switch them out. Let's bring them out again. One in front, one in back. Let's hold it for three, two, one. Switch, three, two, one. Switch, it's tough, three. You gotta keep one up and you're gonna start feeling it where? What muscle is gonna really feel it? Even though we're working out our elbows, what muscle is holding up? The arm right now, it's holding it up. There's two very important muscles. And then there's also the armpit, which is an arch. And if you know anything about bridges, you know, switch, that the arch is one of the strongest kind of structures in engineering. Switch, let's keep it. I'm getting tired. Are you getting tired? I'm getting tired. Here we go. And switch. Let's be a little more specific. What muscle in the shoulder structure is getting strengthened the most, or what two muscles? We mentioned one, I haven't mentioned the other. Let's do two more switches. Switch, three, two, one, and switch. Three, two, and relax. Let's have some water. And remember everybody, it's our deltoid and our trapezius. They're connected into this bone, into the, into the arm, through the shoulder. And they're gonna help to lift. When they shorten up, the arm goes up. When they extend out the arm goes out and we'll do that in just a second let's have a sip of water we're going to do about maybe two or two more then let's bring up nick for some core and then we're going to get into our exercise uh, routine i'm not sure if coach emily is going to be on today i think she was in travel today so she might join us on wednesday um but that doesn't mean we won't still do maybe some breath work or maybe a little meditation at the end of this workout too. Maybe even one of our uh, team leaders can lead us in that. Well, let's have some water first. Hey, John, when you were drinking your water, the cow was showing through the bottle. It's reflecting the green in through the glass. I think that's what's happening. Isn't that so neat, everybody? I mean... It's probably an optical illusion. This is the kind of stuff that some of those magicians, they, they figured this stuff out. And they're like, we can make people see something and then not see it. There's some fancy, fancy stuff. Karen knows, but there's some fancy stuff out there we can do hey, with John, this. I remember the black shirt you wore a couple of years ago when we were doing the workout. And it showed the green. your, your uh, green paw. On the shirt? Oh, that's right. With the paw. That's right. The, the planet positive. That's right. Let's take a deep breath, everybody. It might be hot where you are. Remember, if it's hot, you want to make sure you're staying hydrated. If you can, with cool water too, uh, you know, um, room temperature, the, your room might be kind of warm. So you might not want room temperature. You might want to try to cool your water down. That's going to help you out. You can also use like a cool rag or a washcloth, things like that. You can put that on your head or on your neck. You can also be in the shade. Remember when it's hot, being in the shade is always better than being in the sun. And if you are gonna be in the sun, you don't wanna be in the sun for very long. 
and you want to make sure you're having on sunscreen and maybe wearing a hat, maybe even having on a long sleeve, even though it's warm, it might keep your skin from having that sun exposure. And then if it's not for too long, you won't get too hot. All right, let's go ahead and um, let's move into a little bit of arm work here. And I'm, I wanted to do, we haven't done this in a while, but the I, Y, T, M, A, we had a couple other letters in there. And so I'm gonna go ahead and we're just gonna start off with a few of these. So let's start off with, uh, I gotta find my stocks. I don't wanna hit my fish tank. So the letter T, let's reach those arms out to the side and we're gonna hold them there for three seconds. So let's go three, two, one. Now let's go for the letter W. Nice, there we go. Three, two, one, let's go for the letter Y. There we go, nice. Three, two, one, let's go for the letter I. So arms are up, they're kind of by my ears. And if your arms are forward, try to bring them back. Try to be, you're gonna feel it. You're gonna feel a stretch right here in your pecs. That's okay. Three, two, one, let's go back to a Y. Three, two, one, let's go back to the W. Three, two, one, let's now bring the W to an M. That's a tough one. Three, two, one. Let's go back up to the W. Three, two, one. Now, I don't know what to call this, but let's just do it. What, what could this be? What could letter, could this be a letter, a lowercase I? I like that, lowercase I. Let's do a couple of those. So we're gonna go lowercase I, W. Let's do it again, lowercase I. W, who's starting to feel this in the middle of your back? I am, let's bring it again. Lowercase i, W, let's do the M. Dropping it down into the M. Now look, now watch, we can't really do the lowercase i, right? Our arms, because of the position of our shoulders. So let's bring our arms back up to the W. Let's go back up to a Y. Let's go to a capital I. I like Carla's doing sign language, everybody. That is so cool. Carla's doing the sign language version. Keep that eye up there. She's doing sign. That is so cool. Let's bring it back down to a T. Now I'm going to try out something new. Let's go for a letter C, which is going to have my arms. You can see how I'm doing a letter C. It's kind of like a teacup and like a coffee pot. It's kind of tough because I'm in a small space. All right, let's do a C going the other direction. So again, like a teacup and a coffee pot. I like this one. Let's do another C. Let's go back the other way. Bring another C. All right. Let's go for the letter A, bringing those arms down. Arms straight down. And then let's go for the letter T, bringing them out. What's that spell? All right, and relax. Somebody's going to sit. Somebody's got it. They're like, you smell cat. I saw Coco, the cat, walking through the garden there. Let's have a sip of water, everybody. And we're going to do... Um, let's bring up Nick. Are you ready? Are you ready for your return? All right, everybody. So we're going to do some core exercises. So we're warming up our neck, our shoulders, getting our arms going. If you want to work on your wrist, get your wrist kind of warmed up a little bit. Cause Nick might have us using our wrist. Nick, you're looking great. You got a haircut. Welcome back. How was your trip? It was fun. Awesome. And were you happy to be strong and in shape on your vacation? Yeah, but I eat a lot. You ate a lot. Well, let's go ahead and let's start working it off. So, Nick, what's our first exercise going to be for the core? Yeah, plank. All right, everybody. Nick's going for the plank. So I'm going to do the seated abdominal squeeze. And, Nick, are you going to go for maximum amount of time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I oh, yeah. He's going to go for a max time. Here we go. And one, two, squeeze. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, squeezing, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. He's got that at 28. Everybody, oh, he's back up. He's going again, double squeeze, bringing it up. I think his feet were slipping. Keep it going, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. Squeeze your abdominals, everybody. Squeeze behind your belly button. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. Squeeze, Nick, squeeze and breathe. You're not breathing. <sighs> breathe, everybody, breathe and squeeze. That's the challenge. You have to be squeezing and breathing. If you're doing it, it is gonna be tough. 
55, 56, 57, 58, 59, and 60. 61. 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69. Wow, Nick, great job. Everybody, you got to see something really special from Nick. He kind of slipped out at 29 seconds, but then his mind told his body, it said, get right back up and get right back to it. And he did that. And we saw that. We didn't expect it, but we saw it. I want everybody to take that from Nick's exercise where if you maybe have a slip up, maybe an exercise isn't going perfect. I want you to just get back up. I want you to keep on trying. Nick's going for a teacup overhead reach teacup going into some boxing punches. All right. He's doing a high knee or I'm doing a high elbow, high knee, high elbow, going for a twist reach across the body, going for a twist reach, doing another high knee. I'm going to do a little tap on that one. Back into some punches, punch, punch, hook, hook. Punching, punching, hooking. Oh, going for a coffee pot tip. Ooh, getting limber, tip into the coffee pot. Going again for a high knee or a high elbow. Another high knee or high elbow, reaching up high with the knee. Going for some high punches. Going for some front punches. Going for some side punches. Going for like a big haymaker punch. There we go. Oh, and then he's doing the ground touch. That's actually the windmill. He's doing the windmill. Going down, touching the ground, throwing some more punches. He's letting it loose. Watch your elbows. If you got a desk like me, you might bump your elbow on the desk and ouch. There you go. Nick's bringing it up. High elbow, high elbow, high knee, high knee. Hold it for longer, Nick. Hold it up longer. Concentrate. Deep breath, concentration. There you go. Deep breath, concentration, focusing. There you go. That last one, that's the training rep. We know you can do all the other ones, but that's the one you got to do. That's the one, Nick, right there. The way you were thinking, the way you were working and you were fighting for that balance, that's the way to do it. Great job, Nick. He's got one more for us. What's it going to be, Nick? He's going high five, high five, low five, low five, clap. All right, everybody. Nick's got one more, and it is with a resistance bar. It looks like he's going into a baton spin. If you don't have a resistance bar, Maybe you have something you can spin, anything. I got a pin and I got a protein shaker. I can spin both of them. And I just want to work on my technique of my hands working together to try to not drop the protein shaker. Nick's doing a good job. He's not dropping the baton and he's got it spinning around. Nice job, Nick. There you go. Keep it spinning. You can also try this over your head. All right over the head or on the ground. Oh, well, look at this, he's going for the inchworm. There you go, you have to put pressure on that. Everybody look at that inchworm right there. He's using the stick to apply pressure and then he's working his hands up, but he's always applying pressure for balance. There we go, going down, working down, working down, all the way down. Look at that, Nick, how low can you go? He is relying on, there you go, hold that stick up. You gotta, you gotta push down into it. He's using that pressure, everybody. Nice job, Nick. And here he goes, which is pot. Final lap here. He's taking a lap around. Nick, give us a countdown. In we got a water break. Nine, Next. Eight. One-handed which is pot. Niven. Do it one eight, hand or two hands. Five. Get a little switcheroo. Four, three, two, and one. Nice job, Nick. Nick, what do you think about Carrie's artwork here? I liked it. I like it too, man. This is a great job. Nick, that was outstanding. Welcome back from your trip all the Thank way across the, across the world. Nick was out there across the world visiting Lebanon, visiting family and friends, sharing with them exercise. Sounds like sharing a couple of meals. Maybe had some, some good, uh, good buffets or some good dinners out there. He's giving the thumbs up to that. So remember, everybody, when you're exercising and you are out there and you're out in the world, maybe on vacation, maybe you're on a break from your program, you're going to have opportunities to eat differently, sometimes to eat unhealthy, sometimes to eat maybe more healthy. And you can want to always be thinking about what you're eating. And also remember that if you do eat some foods that aren't necessarily the healthiest foods, don't beat yourself up about it. Don't be all don't be boohooing on it. You just got to remember, well, you're an athlete. And you're just going to get right back onto it and eating some unhealthy foods one time, two times, you know, a couple times. 
where for a short period of time, that's not going to mess up all the progress where you've been working out for hundreds of times, hundreds for years. Some of you have been exercising and you can't just wipe that away with one bad meal. So don't beat yourself up, but always try to make the best decision when you're out there on vacation. It can be tough, um, but you got to remember to make those good decisions. All right. So we're going to be working on some uh, exercise right now that are going to have uh, some wrist strengthening components to them. And the first one that I want to look at is we're going to work on balance. And the first thing that we're going to balance, let me find it, is I'm going to balance this ball. All right. So this is Sophia's medicine ball. This is my little daughter's medicine ball. And it weighs about one pound. It's about a one pound medicine ball. And with this ball, the, the ways we can balance this a lot of different ways. You might have a different way to balance it but I'm gonna balance it with my fist. So I'm gonna take the ball, I'm gonna put it on my hand. So it's just balancing just like this. Now this might be difficult. It might be hard to balance that ball on your fist. If it is, you might be able to balance it like on the top of your hand. You can see that can get a little tough. You can kind of move it around with your fingertips. You could also balance it in the palm of your hand. Now I'm not holding it, we're balancing it, we're holding it. And then in the balance position, I wanna do an exercise. So in this case, I could reach forward and I could bring it back. And I don't wanna drop the ball. That would be the name of the game. So I could reach forward and back. Let's do about five of these going forward and back. And this is again, working on some balance and some stability in my shoulder, but also in my wrist here that has to kind of hold the ball steady. Let's try it on my hand this way. So this is going to strengthen my wrist even more because now you can see that ball wants to move. I have to keep my wrist from collapsing in any direction. So I need my whole wrist to be nice and strong. I'm going to put the ball here and I'm going to try to go up over my head with the ball and then bring it back down. Still there. Let's try a couple more of those. So bringing it up. Oh, oh, oh. And it fell down. I caught it. But you can see if I move too quickly, it's going to fall down. Now look at what I'm doing differently now. Who can say, who can tell what I'm doing differently? Who can tell me? You can tell me in the in the messages. What's the difference between this one? And what's the difference between this one right here? And remember, it fell on me when I it just fell again. So who saw what I did differently right there? I was looking at it, right? I was looking at the ball. And I was allowing my mind to kind of take that picture in. But now what if I can't see the ball? What are some things I could do? I could move slower so I could bring it up nice and slow. And that's going to give my body time to process where that ball is. Now, see, oh, right there, it tried to fall. And you saw how my arm made that little bit of a wiggle move. That I'm trying not to look at it. Oh, and it fell again. So you can see that makes it you know, more of a challenge. So balancing the ball, Nick's talking about, yeah, using my mind. So here we go. I'm going to try to go up and down without looking at it. I'm only trying to feel what it feels like to keep that ball from rolling. Going off a of feeling. Oh, I've almost got it up to the top and it fell again. Oh my gosh, everybody. That's difficult. And that's what we want. That's the kind of exercise challenge that we want to find. Is something that we we're not great at every single time, you know, and that's that was a great one I found right there. So now let's look at accuracy and stability using this ball. So in the case of accuracy and stability, I wanted to show you a way that I could do this. And I'm going to use this water bottle right here and I'm going to put the water bottle. Let's put something on top of it. That's not green. We got to find something that's not green. Here we go. I got a little post it note. Right here, I'm going to put this little post-it note right here on top of my wall. Does it stick? It doesn't stick. There, it's not. I can, now we can't see it. I got to find something to show. So this is the name of the game, everybody. Oh, here's a light bulb. Ooh, this is a challenge. Oh man, I shouldn't have done this. All right. So there we go. We can see the light bulb. So I have now just increased. Ooh, I got to find a way to keep it from falling. This light bulb might not, there it is, all right. So now the name of this game, this is gonna to be tough for me, is I wanna reach out, I wanna tap the light bulb and I wanna keep it from falling. So you can do this with anything, with that object. 
where you can reach out. I have some sunglasses here. I can reach out and I want to tap them very gently. I'm going to reach out here again. I'm going to tap the light bulb. And now if I just went really quick with this, there's a chance I could knock over this light bulb and I'd have light bulb glass everywhere. And my brain knows that. So it's concentrating even more to reach out. And when I get to the tap, it's gentle. You saw, let's switch over to the other side. So I'm reaching out, I'm reaching out. Oh, and I'm just tapping it ever so gently. Reaching out, reaching out, holding on to the ball, tapping. Now, the name of the game with this, remember, is to be accurate and to be stable. I don't want it shaking around. I want to have control over it. Tap and bring it down. All right, let's get that light bulb down. This can be anything. I could reach out and try to tap the camera. So I'm going to bring the ball right at the camera, right at the camera, right at the camera. All right, see, I could bring the ball. I could try to tap it on anything around me. But that's the idea from this is to have a controlled movement to where you're trying to touch something. All right. The next thing we're going to look at is working on a little bit of strength with something like this ball. Now, with strength, we're going to have probably a little bit of movement or we're going to hold steady to where the ball is creating resistance and we're fighting back against it. So in the case of the movement, we've seen these exercises from Carrie where we're rolling our wrist up and down, or we're just moving it like we're on a motorcycle kind of. Let's try out a couple of these little wrist flexions and extensions here. Nice job. And now doing this with a little bit of extra weight, that's going to kind of fire up some of these muscles. It's going to strengthen them up. And now if I wanted to, I could now hold this up. So now my arm wants to go down. So I'm just going to hold it in the up position. And let's see how long I can hold it here for and you can try this too. If you have a small ball like this, you could be holding it up, holding it up, keep it holding it. I'm starting to feel it right here. You might be feeling that too, right there in the back of yours. Keep holding it. This only weighs one pound, but I'm feeling it. I'm a pretty strong guy and I can feel this, getting those muscles. Now I'm having to fight to keep my wrist up and my arm up now, right? Because I'm, I'm fatiguing these muscles. But as they're getting tired, Something's happening that's also going to help them to get stronger. Oh my gosh, I really want to stop now, but I'm not going to because I know when I want to stop and I keep going, that's when I really get stronger. Who's feeling it right here in the back of the wrist? Ooh, oh my gosh, Nick's feeling it. I'm going to only go for a few more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Bring that wrist down. And now feel in the back of your arm how you've gotten all of that muscle back in here to tighten up and to fire up. And again, with just using something like a small ball right here. All right, the last thing I want to work on is going to be speed. So with this, again, if you have a small ball or something small, you're going to be able to do this activity. But all I want you to do, and we've seen this with Carla and with Byron, is I want you to hand it off side to side, but I want you to tap on your shoulder. So I'm going to hand off in the middle and then tap on my shoulder. And so I'm just tapping and I'm tapping and I'm seeing how fast I can go with having this kind of pattern, just moving it side to side. Now I could do this, I could do this with a set of car key. I'm a car key. I could tap, tap, oh, and I dropped them. You saw, it, like I was trying to move too fast. Tap, 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 tap. Now with this, what I'm trying to work on is some speed, but I'm also trying to work on the control from my hands. And what's neat about this is we're not going too far away from our body. We're right here. And so we're very strong and you should be able to move pretty quick until you move too fast and you can't keep up with it. But that's what we want. We want to get our mind to fire up and to move quick. Another way you could do this is reach out and you could reach out like a punch like Byron's doing. And you can see how fast you could get that going to where you're just going fast as you can. Reaching out, switching hands, reaching out, switching hands as fast as you can go. Three, two and one. And what you're going to find then is when we go into regular speed movement, it's going to be easier for us. We're going to have our bodies built up with some stability and some balance and some strength. And then we're going to be able to work on the speed too. So I want everybody to think about this week. You can do it with anything in your classroom or at home. Find an object that you can balance that you can do an accurate reach with, all right, that you can do 
a strength building exercise, maybe having to hold it steady, and then also working on maybe a fast exercise, something with some speed. And just a few minutes ago, I saw Carla make a comment about the medicine ball. The medicine ball is another great piece of equipment that you can use to practice this balance, stability, accuracy, strength, and speed, quickness, power. That's what we're working on here. Everybody, let's have a sip of water. Let's get ready. We're going to do a breath hold. We're going to switch it up. Breath hold's coming up next. All right. Then maybe we could do a little round of um, maybe some cardiovascular training. And let's check in with Ben and Carrie, too, if we want to bring up some, some leadership today. Hey, Gerber Center in the house. Everybody give a big wave to the Gerber Center. Gerber Center doing a great job there working out in their classrooms. Let's give a big wave. We got AC in the house. There's Evan. We got AC and there's another AC. We got double ACs in the house. That's so cool. We got Chris Hill and Olivia, Tion, Paul, Mariana, Carl, Valerie, Caitlin, Sammy. We got a lot of our friends here today. There's Sandy, Sandy's mom, Tyler, Ben, S22, so Pizio Center. So Pizio Center, I had so much fun down there on Friday. I can't wait to come back. I can't wait to come back. And again, remember our friend Nancy, all the amazing, great work she's done. We're so proud of her down there at Sopezio Center. We got Tracy, Chris Hill. We got Bobby down there. There are Sopezio Center team leaders. Remember, if you're at Sopezio Center or Gerber Center or maybe up in North County, San Diego, we're doing exercise all the time. Even when we're not doing our workouts, we're thinking about exercise and we're sharing those ideas with our friends, our classmates, and our, our, our you know, our peers, the people that are going to always be there with us. We're a team. All right, let's go ahead. And speaking of a team, we're going to do the breath hold and then let's bring up a team leader. Let's get another leader up here. But I'm thinking for the breath hold, let's go ahead and do, uh, let's do a good, a good length one. Let's go for 20 second breath hold. All right. Oh, I'm going to say something funny. Some of y'all will be like, ah, oh, it's not that funny. Imagine you're driving up in central California, and there are a lot of cows up in central California. And let's imagine we just, for a moment, we got to hold our breath because it does not always smell good in some of those spots. Let's get ready. Let's do our traditional breath hold. Here we go. The cows just bringing up all kinds of memories. All right, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. Breathe in, hold. Here we go, a little more. We made it. All right, we're back out. Of, we're out of the valley. Woo! Who's Sorry, been up I there? I had the snicker there because you, you, you held your nose. Yeah, that's well, that was, you know, so remember, Ben, when I was in the Navy for four years, I, um, I didn't know where I was going when I signed up to go to Lemoore. I thought Lemoore was by the ocean, and I just never heard of it. And I hadn't heard of it. And then when I picked it, I went back in the Navy. I was in the barracks. I went back to the barracks. Everybody was laughing. They're like, this guy, he wants to go to Lemoore. And I went and I found out that Lemoore is not by the ocean. And it is surrounded by agriculture. So there are farmlands everywhere and there are cows everywhere up there. And if you don't like the way cows smell, it's probably not the best place to be living all the time. If you live up there right now, come visit me in San Diego. We'll rinse it off in the ocean. Let's go ahead and bring up a team leader, everybody. That was a good breath hold. That was 20 seconds. That was some memories. My mom's laughing. Uh, and let's check in. Let's see with uh, with Carrie. Carrie, who are you thinking we're going to bring up next? Let's bring up Byron. All right, everybody. We got Byron. He's got an orange shirt on. He's got a sandbag in his hands. And we are going to be getting rocking and rolling. Remember, everybody, these sandbags, this is like a just a bag of sand covered with some uh, like wetsuit material. This is kind of like what I wear when I go in the ocean in the winter. All right, Byron, let's do, um, let's do kind of a medium, medium flow. And that way we'll be able to time for some other leaders. Yep. 
All right, I'll give a play-by-play. -play. And here we go, Byron. He's going to make our day. He's going to start with the sandbag in his hand. He's going to move it around like he's leading the band. Here he goes, right hand to left hand. Going back and forth. There we go. It's a little bit of an arm swing, a little bit of a sandbag toss up in the air. Catching it. Nice job. I can see Carla. She's doing it. Nick's doing it. Remember, you can follow along with Byron or you can do these moves on your own some other time. You can watch him right now and get some ideas. Look at this. He's putting that up on his shoulder and balancing it on his shoulder. And now he's going for a little bit of a walk. It's like take your parrot, parrot for a walk day. And who's ever seen somebody walking around with a parrot on their shoulder? Who's ever seen that? They got some people like that. They walk around the world and they bring, there you go. He dropped that parrot off his shoulder. Nice job, Byron, putting it up on the other shoulder. Got the parrot walk. Sometimes the parrots talk. Carla, she's seen it. She put it in there. She's seen that before. And now Byron's getting ready to go bowling. Look at that. He's got the arm lifting up, practicing the bowling roll. That's the bowler's arm swing. And imagine if you were at the bowling alley right now, you'd be rolling that arm back and then rolling it forward. The only difference is Byron's not letting go of the sandbag. There he goes. He did a little let go right there. And that's going to help him with his bowling. I bet Byron's going to be getting a couple more strikes next time he goes out and goes bowling with this warm up. But there he goes behind the back, in front of the body, going side to side. Nice job. Everybody, remember, you can follow along or you can just watch Byron do this and practice this later. Try that side twist out right now. You don't need a bag to do that. Just try twisting over to the side, following Byron along. He's grooving in the socks. He's got the socks on the ground. Do a nice pivot off the ground. He did a hot potato off the ground, hot potato one, hot potato two. Going around the back, hot potato three, side to side around the back, off the ground, getting the dust bunnies. And there he goes between the knees with the figure eight. Look at these moves, everybody. Byron's going between the knees, behind the knees, around the back of the knees, going in front, popping it up, bringing it down, up on the shoulders. There you go, Byron. We were just having, I was talking about you earlier in my business meeting. We want to say hi to our, our friends at Alliance of Abilities up there in Orange County. There we go. Byron's hanging it out. Manaya, here we go. We got the arms going down, getting that back stretch in, everybody. Stretch out your back a little bit. Let your, let your back stretch down. But he's got the sandbag balancing. There you go. Byron catching it off his back, getting ready for the switcheroo. I think that's what he's about to do. He's going for one more hang loose off the back, getting ready to roll it on out of the way. And if you have an exercise stick, or a resistance bar. Nice job. Byron got a strike on that one there, knocking all the pins down. Go ahead and get your resistance bar. Remember, if you don't have a resistance bar, you can watch along and you can just follow what Byron's doing. You can practice this later on, maybe on your own. All right, everybody, check out Byron. He's holding it up with one hand in the air. Look at this man. He's showing us. He's like, I got four fingers up. I got my thumb down around. Lorraine's got it going. Nick, Carla, there we go. So PZO center got it going on. Gerber center. Byron's look at this. He's doing the punch. He's doing the single arm punch with the bar in the air. Everybody, you can try out this punch. If you don't have a bar, use your imagination. My man, Tyler, he's in the house. There you go, Evan. Hold that arm up and just imagine you're punching out. There you go. There you go, Carl. Nice job. Carl's got it going on. There you go, Carl in the red shirt. Nice job, Carl. Try it with one hand now. Try one hand like Byron's got it. There you go. AC, look at AC in the house. There you go, AC. AC's punching it, Byron. You are leading the group. Yeah, Crystal. Yeah, girl. There you go. In the house. Look at that, Byron. He's holding it and giving it a tap. Giving it a tap like a pat, like it's a dog. Giving it a pat on the back. There you go. Pat on the belly. There you go. You know, we always give a pat on the back but not a pat on the belly. All right, Byron's going into the baton spin. Everybody, try your baton spin. There you go. AC, again, has got a great move going for that. Byron's doing, oh, look at that baton spin. Byron is in the Marines. He is out there in the parade, Macy's Day. He's leading it, us all the way down. He's on Hollywood Boulevard saying, clear the lanes. Let's get out of there. We're bringing everybody through. We got the whole parade, all the floats. Coming up behind me. Look at Byron with this spin. He's going into a spin frenzy. We saw this the other day where he just, he started spinning. It was like a hurricane spinning around. Always watch out for the ceiling fan. Here we go. Byron's getting down low. 
getting ready to bring it on home, but he's not done yet. He's got a couple more moves. He's going for the low squat, and I see a lot of you doing it too. Nice job getting down low, everybody. How low can you go? Bending your knees, getting down by your toes. Then you're going to stand back up. Then you're going to get back down low. There you go. Watch Byron. He's getting down low. He's got to stick his hips back. And then he's bringing that bar all the way to the ground. This is going to make us strong for lifting things up. We're using our whole body to lift up. We're not just using our arms and our back, but the whole body to lift. Who's heard that before? Here we go. Lumberjack. There you go, Carl. Get that ax up on your shoulder. There you go. Like you're a lumberjack. Remember, we've seen the lumberjack. Who's the famous lumberjack? Paul Bunyan, right? You got the axe on your shoulder. Byron showing us how it's done with a resistance bar on his shoulder, moving forwards and backwards. Nice job. Carl's doing it too. Sandy's got it going on. Lou's, you're doing it too. Keep it going, Byron. It's what you got to do. All right. Nice, Byron. Keep it going. Byron's getting ready. He's setting it down. Is he going to bring it all the way to the ground? He's doing a ground tap. It's tough when you're holding it all the way at one end like that. And it looks like he's bringing it down. That's all she wrote, everybody. What a great job from Byron. Incredible job. Is that it, Byron? That it. All right, man. Wow, what a fantastic job. Byron, again, leading us through the flow getting a little arm stretch going on there. I like that. Remember, if you want to do some stretches for your arms, let's do a couple. Remember, the across the chest stretch, that's a pretty classic one for our shoulders. Sometimes we don't have to do that one as much as stretching our arm behind us. So in my case, I have like a desk here. I can kind of put my hand on the desk and then I'm going to turn my body away and I'm going to stretch my chest right here. And that's going to help out with that muscle. So you can see, Got my arm down here, I turn away, I stretch my chest out this way. Also with our wrist and our biceps, we can sometimes take our arm, if you can, extend it, and you can pull down on your fingers and that's gonna stretch through your forearm, right? Sometimes our forearms are real tight right here. And so by opening that up and stretching back, it's gonna stretch out that forearm. If you can straighten your arm out, you can stretch it and you'll actually get now your bicep is going to be getting some stretches too. All right. Um, good job, everybody. Let's keep it going. I think we might have time um, for one more leader. I know she was talking about doing a medicine ball workout and that might, we might be able to do that in about the four or five minutes we have. So let's have a water break and everybody one more time. Let's get a real good look at this diamond art. I'm going to move out of the way for a second. And if you want to see the full picture you can see it right here. I mean, that is the full picture right there. But check out that, everybody. Again, great job from Carrie doing the diamond art. I love it. And it looks like this cow is maybe trying to lick me, get my hair to stick up, and the hair won't go back down, right? Who's ever heard of that, right? They, they, the colic, they call it a cow lick. Even though there's a colic and a cow lick, and then the hair sometimes is all stuck up. And they're like, somebody thinks a cow licked you. Carl, are you ready for a medicine ball? All right. Let's go ahead, everybody. Carl, let's do about. I go about cows. Look at my picture. Oh, my gosh. Look, Carla's got cows on the back. Oh, they're taking I, a nap. I that cows, there were cows in the Hague. In the Hague. I in saw the some Hague. cows. Cows yes. in the Hague. Oh, my gosh. All yeah, right. You got your, can you show us your medicine ball before we start? Yeah. Let me go to the. I'm going to use a sandbag. Like what? Yeah. All right, Carla, go ahead and show us what we're, we're going to do. We're going to do the push one. All right. One, two, eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And we're going to do one, two, three, four. You go up over five, the shoulder. Six. Nice job. There you go. Seven. Go to the PZO center. Nine, there ten. You go. We're going to do curve. Good job, Nick. Curl up and down. Two. Your biceps. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then catch. One. Throwing and catching. Two, three. This is tough. Four, five, six, 
six on that Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty. One. And down. Two. Three. There you go. Lift it high. Four. Good job, Carla. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yes. It was a 12-pound. I'm going to ball. That's a 12-pounder? Yeah, look it. Wow, everybody. So, Carla, that is incredible. So now remember, before Carla was working out with an eight-pound medicine ball. Now, everybody, Carla just- I got it in, um, I got it in a Walmart. That's excellent. Walmart. Everybody. Carla was able to get herself a heavier medicine ball. So what we've been able to see from Carla over the last year- And it tells you the big, exercise, too. Oh, it's got exercises and everything. And I think you, when you started off, did you have a six pound medicine ball? And then you got an eight? And I now got the you have a 12. One. Yeah. So everybody, Carla now has, she's got multiple medicine balls, but the 12 pounder, that one is going to make her strong. And what Shut we it. saw today, very strong. And what we saw today was if you remember the repetition, who remembers what a repetition is? Remember the repetition, that's when we do the just one time of an exercise. So with the bicep curl, that would be one yeah. repetition. If I went one, two, three, that would be three repetitions. Now, when you're doing exercises with heavy weight, you might not be able to do as many repetitions. Maybe you can't do 20, maybe you can't even do 10, but if you can do two or three, maybe even just one, that's going to make you stronger. And if you continue to do that, you'll find out that you'll be getting stronger and then you'll be able to do 10 repetitions and then you'll be able to even maybe get a heavier weight or do a totally new exercise. So great job, Carla. She's showing us some really good progress with increasing the weight of her medicine ball and building strength in her arms and in her core. That's what those medicine balls are really good for. And you know why they probably call it the medicine ball, right? I, I would imagine the reason is, is because you can use it every day and they say exercise is like medicine for the body. And so maybe they think with the medicine ball that it's kind of like taking your medicine. Um, some people take a medicine or like a vitamin and things like that. Well, if you think of exercise, like something that you have to take every day, Maybe that medicine ball is one of the ways you do that. Everybody, this has been a great workout. Let's have another sip of water real quick. Mm -hmm. Let's check in. Um, Nick, do you want to lead us in a real short uh, breathing exercise? All right, we got thumbs up, everybody. Nick, go ahead and, and um, lead us in maybe just something for like one minute, like a breathing exercise that you like from Coach Emily. All right, we build you did, but we dedicated the 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 one guy, and put it on you for it. Uh, you move down to your tail, then you will make your group tail down to me that he that the then he would. Are you move on the way out to your leg? Tell you they do that, me that day. And then now, breathe in and breathe in out. Move your head and out with your head, out with your head. And tell you they do that, me that head. Breathe in and breathe in out. Feel your identity and out of your head and do your own breathe. Feel your own breathe, me that we don't know breathe. Breathe in and, and breathe in out. Move your head and out do your oh boy, then do your door. And then do your day with that door. 
and bleeding out. Now move then do you they then you will and your heart now move your identity to your elbow and your arm and your wit and tell them to me that we that we did now and we Move your dead and help, help do your trap kid there. And they are down to me that we that do a period. And then when you are done, you are there, open your eyes. Then that up, do it for your time, feeling, and breathe out. We know that. Every year, the moment we did, now we did. You build it up, and if we did, then we did with it, then we did. You want to go ahead and do the breathing motto now, Nick? Oh, I hear me one. I don't want to do it. They better think you do my. They were not feeling it, and that didn't prove. They were not who it. Tell my to me, to me, I don't want to die. Then you die. I know you die, and I hope I will do you die at them. All the family from Lebanon now come out here. Let's all go surfing with Nick. Yeah. And on, take it away. Oh, okay. And bye, buddy, to anyone else. We then the dirt. We without the dead. We then the happy. We without the dead. We then the bed. And we without the wood. And we then the power. Do you do we? My dog, but that one. Nice job, Nick. Great job. Great meditation, everybody. Let your body relax. Go ahead and tell yourself, relax body. And like Nick said, the namaste, that means the light in me acknowledges and respects the light inside of you. We all have light inside of us that can shine. Everybody, all week long, let your light shine bright. Great job to Lorraine, Byron, Nick, Carla, my mom, AC Sopizio Center. Great job, Team Gavel. GLW, we got AC in the house, Caitlin, Carl, Valerie, Luz, Sandy, Tyler, Ben, Sammy, Carrie, the Sopizio Center, Nancy, Sarah, Judes, everybody. We'll see you on Wednesday at 11. And if you're on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. And again, great job to Carrie for the background artwork, the diamond art. This cow is beautiful. Great job to Carrie. Here we go, everybody, in five, four, 